Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Downey and today we are going to be continuing the massive debate to PCT or not to PCT. So I am sorry for the long break I've taken from YouTube. I just had a lot going on at the end of last year and hopefully this year I'll be able to post more often. I will try my best. There is a lot of interesting stuff coming out at the moment and I'd love to discuss it with you guys and always share your opinions on what I produce down in the comments below. But with all that out of the way, let's get started with the video. So this video is going to be covering a study that was released at the end of last year, looking into, not surprisingly, PCTs. So essentially it looked at factors predicting normalization of reproductive hormones after secession of anabolic androgenic steroids in men. So they wanted to see what assisted with recovering these men back to baseline. However, as you'll come across whilst we go through this video, they never had a baseline and the baseline they use in the study to confirm normalization of hormones is just the lower end cutoff of the reference range for testosterone, LH and FSH. Again, the study is retrospective, single-centered, so it's not the best form of evidence, but again, we don't have much in this topic of medicine. So there were around 600 participants included in the study, about 170 of them did not use a PCT, 471 did. So they had excluded individuals with potential confounding variables such as very high testosterone levels, very high LH levels, having used PCT within the last week, um, anything that could affect the validity of the results. And so again another problem with the study is they basically divided the measurement of hormones into less than three months and more than three months they didn't really follow up for that long either again it was retrospective so they couldn't do that but in the study we get results similar to the harlem study if you could forgot what that is i discuss it with emil all the time and it essentially showed that around the three month period after stopping steroids there was more or less no, uh, the same amount of normalization of hormones in the no PCT group as there were in the PCT group. So what is a PCT for those of you who might not know? It's an essentially an attempt to normalize your hormone levels after a steroid cycle. You could use something like HCG that directly stimulates the testicles to produce testosterone or something like a serum where it inhibits negative feedback on the pituitary or you could use a combination of both but as this was retrospective that couldn't really be controlled so you had some people people just using hcg just using a serum or a combination of the two so what is the percentage normalization after three months in the pct group versus the non-PCT group. Well, both of them were more or less the same. So this kind of confirms the Harlem study results. At three months, normalization was achieved by approximately half of the participants, 48.2%. There wasn't much of a difference between those who had used a PCT versus those who had not used a PCT. But it doesn't really end there. There were other things I looked at, which I think uh, some of you might find interesting. But before we look at the results more in detail, there is a big confounding variable between the no PCT group and the PCT group. And it's a quite an obvious one, and that's that the people who didn't use a PCT were more likely to have used an oral steroid and not an injectable, whereas those who did opt for a PCT had used more suppressive compounds. So again, there's that confounding variable between the two. As we know that with 
oral steroids that are short acting, people tend to recover quickly from them. Whereas something like Nandrolone, which was more often used in the PCT group, that is going to stay around in the system for a while and create more suppression, I suppose. So I'm going to post up this table and I do apologize, I'm sweating a lot. It is boiling over here. Now, if we look at this table that looks at odds ratios, we can see that with age, that doesn't seem to be a predictor of whether or not you will recover from the cycle. Again, they didn't really include many older participants because old people don't tend to use steroids, but that's just interesting to note. But if we look at the results within the first three months of stopping the steroid, there's something interesting that appears from these numbers. And that's that if you use a PCT, you are more likely to recover or reach normalization within three months than someone not using a PCT. Now, if we look at the results after the three month period and compare how many have recovered in the no PCT group versus a PCT group, the numbers are more or less the same. However, looking back at within the three months, more people in the PCT group have recovered and it more or less stays the same in the PCT group thereafter. Again, interesting things to note is that the more steroids that you use, the longer it will probably take you to recover. Um, and this was statistically significant. Again, with cycle duration, this is important because the longer your cycle is, the more difficult it is for you to recover. We kind of know this, but it's nice to see it in writing. And if we look at the no PCT group and compare the no PCT users recovery within the first three months to after three months, there's an increase in the amount who have recovered. So it shows that those not using a PCT tend to take longer to recover. This again was confirmed where they use log regression coefficients and again demonstrated that PCTs help people recover faster. But after three months, the total amount of those who have recovered in P a PCT versus non-PCT group is more or less the same which is, as I said, what we know from the Harlem study. So you could make conclusions that it's better to take a PCT because you will recover faster within those first three months period as demonstrated in the study. However, there was no research looking into whether a faster recovery resulted in, let's say, better moods, not feeling the hypogonadism, as well as helping you keep more muscle. You can kind of assume that that might be the case, but it might not be the case because there isn't too much data to demonstrate this. It's just assumed that the longer you're hypogonadal, the more difficult it is to keep that muscle that you got on cycle. But testosterone being hypogonadal for a short duration or three months might not have a massive impact. We don't have studies to say that it does. I mean, it makes logical sense that it could, but again, that muscle mass that you think you lose in your PCT, a lot of the time is just glycogen and water weight. So essentially those were the outcomes that they found in the study. PCT makes you recover faster. However, after three months, yada 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 they're both the same and you can do with that what you like what i want to talk about quickly is the overuse of hcg during a pct period whilst again this is kind of hypothetical because there isn't much data on it and it's essentially me drawing a mechanistic action of these hormones but hcg monotherapy for a post-cycle therapy might possibly not be the best thing. And the reason I say this is because HCG being similar to LH lowers 
LH production. And what you want to achieve in your post-cycle therapy is an increase not only in your testosterone, but in your gonadotropins like LH and FSH. Do I think there is a need for HCG? Yes. Do I think they should have compared these different PCTs? Also, yes, they didn't do that in the study. So HCG does have a place in PCT, but I wouldn't use it after you've stopped the steroid. I would use it towards the end of the cycle whilst you have something suppressing your LH and FSH in order to help the testicles get a bit of stimulus. Again, hypothetical, but to improve sensitivity and their size so that when your LH and FSH recover, you're not waiting for the testicles to gain their function back. And then on stopping the steroids, you would stop HCG, and then you would essentially start using a CIRM. The duration between the last use of steroid versus when you should initiate the CIRM is kind of up to debate. People say you should start a PCT five half-lives after the last steroid being used. Perhaps, but there's not much data on that, and this study would suggest that if you want an improved recovery, you should probably start it earlier rather than later. So that is the new study that was released on PCTs. I want to know what you guys think about the study, and obviously my opinions will change as more research comes out, and so far it has changed a little bit. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one.